All right, it's 6.30. Call into order the town council meeting for Monday, December 12th, 2023. And Jimmy, you want to do the, start off us with the prayer? I know it says pledge first, but we'll do the prayer first. Have to mix things up occasionally. Conversation, our thoughts, leading and guide our, our things that we need to do for this uh, town. We ask you to bless us again as what you can. We ask the same to you the same. Amen. Amen. Who has the pledge today? Sandy. All right. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, Sandy, roll call. Oh, yes. William Ellis. Here. Trevor Sager. Here. Scott Oldham. Here. Pamela Samples. Here. Dan Swalker. Here. All right. Jimmy, I think you are next on this. Police officer recognition. I'm feeling a little I didn't take anybody a piece of chocolate. Thank you, Mr. President. We appreciate you giving us the time to do this tonight. As, as most of you know, we had an incident at the school uh, last Thursday morning uh, that could have been disastrous. You know, through the staff and uh, co cooperation with the, uh, the RSROs, it was diverted. Uh, this this uh, uh, weapon that was found uh, was hid so well that uh, uh, Alec had to search a couple times to find it. But on the morning of December 8th, Alec, would you come up, please? With your big smile. <laughs> Dr. Sanders, would you like to come up, too? We'll include you in the present presentation. On the morning of December 8th, 2022, Richland B. Boston student reported that they thought a junior high student had a gun in his possession on the way to school. Officer Ledger was immediately notified, and with the administrators of the staff, they located the weapon. This meritorious action indicates that the highly need for trained, uniformed police officers to be present in all of our school buildings. This recognition from Richland Bean Boston Corporation staff, also Police Department Command staff, presented this day, no, December 12, 2022, by Chief Jimmy Dernal and Board President William Ellis. Jerry, you want to get it? Oh, Speech, as they say. Okay. I just want to really uh, thank Alec, you know, um, you never want to see something like that uh, happen in your backyard. Uh, and uh, so um, Alec is a hero. But, you know, Alec is a hero each and every day of the school year. Uh, he uh, comes to, to work and he uh, he's, uh, builds relationships with these uh, uh, children who are going to one day be junior hires and high schoolers and adults. and. Uh, so uh, I'm very proud to have Alec as our SRO. We have the best one in the state of Indiana. So. Agreed. Valerie Brewer has some presentations. I'm Valerie Dewar. I am part of the Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors. And we feel very confident that our community is as wonderful as it is because of the school system a great being as wonderful as it is and so we are very proud of this officer as well and we would like to let him know that with a little bit from us As a veteran teacher of 40 years, I have to tell you, there are times that you feel 
totally exposed in a classroom. And SROs were not a part of my life, and I wish they would have been. I probably would have felt a lot better. Thank you. I appreciate your, appreciate your time. Thank you. Hold on just a second. Okay. Jimmy's, Jimmy's not done. Uh, the chamber also took up uh, uh, some uh, reward uh, uh, cards for the student that turned the uh, other student in, and we appreciate that. You know, we, we've got to see something, say something type uh, atmosphere at the high school and junior high, and this uh, sure came into to full uh, circle there uh, last Thursday because it really helped, uh, really helped us out. So we'll take that up to her tomorrow. Thank you. Right, next on our agenda. I, I, by the way, I like presiding over things like this. This is this. You like that? Yes, I do. So uh, that'll work. All right. So we're at approval of minutes for the regular meeting and work session, November twenty eighth, twenty twenty two. Yes. Action to pay, accounts payable, vouchers, and payroll. Second. Second. Mellis? Yes. Scott Oldham? Yes. Trevor Sager? Yes. Dan Swafford? Yes. Pamela Samples? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, we got resolution 25 2202, Surplus Street Department. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> a few years ago, <laughs> We had uh, we started the uh, uh, enterprise fleet management for the town, you know, and the plane department has a truck right now through the enterprise fleet management. Uh, the three trucks that the fire department originally had ordered was supposed to have got canceled, and they never did. Uh, they have came in, and uh, so we're going to do the. Uh, the, with that fleet management deal through Enterprise, we're going to do like we uh, initially was going to do with uh, the plane department's truck. It's going to go trade in for one of them. And then uh, we are wanting to surplus uh, two vehicles in the, the, the public works, one being in the street, the 2019 Chevrolet Silverado, and uh, the other ones in the utilities. It's a 2012 uh, Chevrolet Silverado 1500. Uh, these two vehicles, uh, the, if I say that's all right, Mike, the, the equity in the vehicle goes towards our uh, lease. Okay. So it reduces the price is what it does. So, uh, and there are two, 2022 Rams is what they are, half-ton Rams. Four-door pickups. Four-door pickups. So I'm asking you today to, be, to, to go ahead and surplus these two vehicles. Uh, also, to let you know, uh, for the near future, we've got a, a, a 2012 uh, F-250 that we're going to do in the, the fleet part two as well, and another vehicle is coming up for the uh, uh, inspector. Is that right? Building. For the building inspector, so we'll have a couple more trucks that we'll need to in the future uh, surplus to do that into the fleet. Okay. So to be clear, we want approval to surplus vehicles that we will let go uh, as we transfer to lease vehicles. Right. Well, we need a motion every time this is done or can this be a blanket We're motion? not asking for permission to lease. We're just needing the trucks. To surplus know, these to trucks. Surplus. I'm saying, will this c cover the other trucks that you need to surplus as part of this agreement or do we need to do it each time? We'll do it each time. Okay. All right, any council uh, you got a question, Scott? So are these trade-ins or are they being surplused? They, we well, are, tra yeah, we're trading them in and the value goes to the purchase of the, or the lease of the vehicles. For instance, uh, uh, Denise's vehicle, which is, this is her third year owning it? This is 2021 Ford. 2021 Ford, so her new lease 
will be reduced from $511, these are rounded figures, to $362. Yeah, it's a 313. 313. So um, we are taking advantage of the vehicles that the fire department originally tried to purchase. They had incentives on all three vehicles, and um, we initially we were not, not we were going to pass up the vehicles, and so they came to town because we was talking about lease leases in the future, and then when we realized that we could take the equity and the vehicles we have now, reduce some of the um, uh, lease, lease amounts, um, we took advantage of those incentives, and uh, we'll have all new vehicles, and, and we're, we're going to start leasing them instead of owning them. Well, I get that. My question is for Sandy, I guess, on this. In this resolution, we put that we have a contract with Enterprise Fleet, and that these are going to be traded in. I guess my question, to make it clear and so we're not setting a bad precedent, I was under the impression with state law that as long as you're trading the vehicle in, we don't have to surplus it. It's if we're selling it on the open market, we have to surplus it. Oh, well, I don't know the answer to that, so I'll refer that to Ms. Well, I looked at it. Um, I'm happy to look at it again. I couldn't find anything that said that specifically, which is why we tinker with okay. the language. So, But yeah, I'll, I'll be happy to look. For down the road here that we're Please, doing trying to be I looked and I was trying to find this in between category and I didn't see it, but yeah. I'll look again. And but this also just gives a little bit of tracking when I'm audited. Whenever I take something off of fixed assets, then I have some paperwork to I show. It. I just don't want to go down both roads <coughs> repeatedly right. if we don't have to by law, making it more difficult for everybody concerned. Right. Any other council discussion? Any public comment? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion. Move approval of resolution 25 2022. I think it's what it's supposed to say. Yes. Surplus Street Department. Uh -huh. Let's off on that one for the moment. Okay, thanks. Second. William Ellis? Yes. Scott Oldham? Yes. Trevor Sager? Yes. Dan Swafford? Yes. Pamela Samples? Yes. Mm -hmm. Motion carries. Thank you very much. All right, or, uh, ordinance is on first reading. Ordinance 2022-18 to create a fund for local income tax development, local income tax economic development. Is this you, Sandy? Yes, and this is when we started to get our local income tax public safety, um, State Board of Accounts required us to put that in a standalone fund. And so this is the same way. I'm creating a fund, so this will be isolated. Any council discussion on this? Public comment? Seeing none, back to the council for action. Well, this is the first oh, reading. Oh, first reading. We don't need action. Okay, first reading. And this one can wait till next yep. time. Okay. We just need to have it uh, by the end and before the before new year starts. Before we start getting our draws, yeah. Gotcha, okay. All right, ordinance is on second reading. Ordinance 2022-15, fixing of the salaries for budget year 2023. And I had asked, you know, we're in the process of updating our salary ordinance, our personnel policy. And this firm suggested so much stuff be moved into the salary ordinance, a huge amount of stuff. And I was not comfortable asking, putting that in the salary ordinance before we pass the personnel policy. So then we got into a time issue. So I have not changed this salary ordinance other than I found an error on the last page on the date. Um, and I would just ask that you accept it as originally presented. Any council discussion on this? Any public comments? Seeing none, back to council for action. Make a motion to approve ordinance 2022-15, fixing of the salaries for budget year 2023. Second. William Ellis? Yes. Scott Oldham? Yes. Trevor Sager? Yes. Dan Swafford? No. Pam Samples? Yes. Motion carries. Old business, do we have any that we need added? Seeing none. Flood report. We have no flood report. Right. Envision Ellisville update. I guess this would be in addition to what we just did today. So come on up, Dan. Uh, D 
Dan Rary. Um, this afternoon we had uh, two Envision Ellettsville uh, planning workshops that were very well attended. I was very pleased that we had a combined attendance from both of them of um, see seven plan commission attendees, uh, three uh, council attendees, and six town employees attendees. So very, very good turnout and a very good discussion. I appreciate everybody coming. Thank you. Thank you. Right, new business. Um, Bynum and Fanio, utilities contract discussion. Who has that? That'd be me. All right. Uh, we have sent, and I think uh, I'm assuming that Sandy give you handouts mm -hmm. uh, as well, and I think we've had some discussions with some of the board members individually. Um, at this time, I think about when we're down to our last five years, we've always reached out and looked for a vote of confidence for a five-year extension on our contract. Um, one of the handouts is a number of the employees that either do daily or have touched uh, Eldsville and, and their credentials. And I just, I think it's important to see the people that we have on staff that help uh, help us run our business and, and run your business as well. And, um, and then the, in, in the contract, uh, there have been discussions of the town manager's pay. And uh, I think uh, Mike would like for it to go through BFU instead of having two W-2s and you guys having to pay payroll taxes and the other things that go with uh, paying an employee that uh, actually save the town some money if we do it that way, and we'd, we'd really like to amend our contract to include that pay. And I think um, some of the other things, the uh, other more important thing is we have always uh, went by the CPI for our raise, and um, obviously the CPI is much higher than 3% uh, this year, and it's ran relatively low for the sometimes flat, uh, for the life of our contract, and um, we're like everybody else, we're going to get hit with inflation, and so we would like to change that to 5%, uh, the ceiling on it. I can't remember what else did we put in the bottom. Oh, it's the bottom. That's it? Yeah. So I entertain any questions you might have or thoughts uh, moving forward. And to be clear, from the town standpoint, uh, the, my, my pay for being the town manager, which I'm going to start getting paid, thank you, um, uh, that uh, goes through the Bynum Faneuil contract but would end immediately uh, upon resigning or more likely getting fired. And so, um, and so, so I wanted to be clear that that, that salary disappears from the Biden Fanio contract if I hit the lottery. I would like to make a request. Um, in your original contract back in 2017, that's probably not your original, but one of the revised ones, um, there was a great chart. And then since then, Rick would send me the CPI statement every year, and I, I've kept that in the file. But I'm currently being audited, and your contract was one of them they randomly looked at. And they requested that we get that rate structure each year. So along with your CPI statement, then just give me your rates on a printout, and I'll put it in the file, and then it's clear for them, the auditors, each year, because then they look at what your contract says and what I actually, the checks I issue, to make sure that I'm doing it properly. That should not be a problem. Thank you very much. I think much. I do have those in the files. Okay. So I can provide those. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and the other thing that's important is that our, our, ch our names changed and we really need to change the name on the contract as well so that um, you're protected in case there's a reason for you to be protected and we're protected as well uh, with our liability insurance. So we would make those changes as well. The, though they be in minor, I think they're important to uh, change that at the top of the contract. Council discussion? This is only voted on next time. Yeah, we're not, I, I wouldn't think we'd be voting it on. I, there's not an actual contract in here. It's just, right, it's just your summary. It's just a summary right. of 
what we just discussed. Uh, there was also um, another thing that we'd provided, and uh, I'm sure you've read it from front to back, all of you. <laughs> I do have a question. I don't, I guess I don't see the point in why we don't pay the town manager out of the town money like we do everybody else. I mean, to me, that would be like me having Sandy, when I do the poll recruiting, having Sandy to send my money for town council to them and letting them all, then letting them pay me for one check. I don't see well, that. Well, I had personal reasons for wanting it, and some of it's retirement, and and uh, so I'm already collecting perf, and I just didn't want it to be a problem for me. It's the same amount of money, so it, uh, and it goes away if I'm not here, so. It's really, it's really no different than you paying us to be managers of your utilities or your department of public works um, so it's still a professional agreement to fill all of those duties and we're just adding town manager as one of our additional duties if that makes sense to you yeah and it is actually saving the town money because if he were an employee then we would be required to put him under perf which is 14.2 percent a year and we would have to pay his matching Social Security and Medicare, which is 7.65% a year. So in essence, by contract, we're saving money. And, and all you're doing is paying me. You're not going to provide me with a phone or a vehicle or gas or any materials. Every once in a while, I do steal a pen, but that's so. We're, we're keeping track of those. So. Um, <laughs> What would be the, I mean, could we kind of break these two things apart? Because one thing I'm not fully comfortable with is passing something longer than the term of a town council member, so four years instead of five. Um, it's, that's, so could we <coughs> sever that and may, or, or change that to, I mean, would, why well, don't you just limit the amount of time in the contract that you will pay by Nathaniel for my services? Well, not necessarily. I'm talking about just you. I'm talking about no. just the contract in general. They want a five-year oh, okay. renewal, yeah. and it would put it out. What year would it put it out expiring now if we did the five-year renewal? 2032. Right, and so we're binding future count town councils to this decision, and I, I don't know if I feel comfortable with that. There's precedent. There is. Um, no, I understand that. I'm just I'm just telling you a concern of mine. And so, could we add you to the contract without extending the contract? That's between you and. Okay. Uh, when is your contract up? Twenty twenty-seven. Yes. Twenty twenty-seven, and you're wanting to extend it now to. We have done that. Historically, right. 10 years, uh, it's getting harder and harder to retain certified operators. And um, I'm also looking at the future of, you know, BFU. We hope to n never go away. Um, certainly, we keep continue to grow. Uh, I can tell you there is a shortage of certified operators in the state of Indiana. So uh, the, current, uh, the current people we have working there, may not be here in 10 years, and I'm pretty sure they won't be. Uh, so, you know, when we're, we're on the same situation as what, just counter what William's talking about, we need the ability to say, hey, if you come to work for us, we got these contracts and the length of them. So I think uh, it was important back in 20, what, whatever the year was, we'd, we'd done this as well, that we got a 10 year contract and we've always, in, in the last of the fifth year, tried to extend it back to 10 years, but we'll do whatever you want. So, and I'm sorry, I, so you, it's 2027, and then you want it extended to? 2032. 2032. Okay, and a um, couple things, and I'll let you guys talk. Uh, one thing I've got a question about is the current line in the in our salary ordinance and in the budget of the town manager's position 
we left that 45,000 in there, correct, Sandy? We did, but then I will do, uh, I, it's in the same, no, I'll have to do a resolution to transfer that money from personal services to miscellaneous professional. Because what I don't want to happen is that we double pay because right. notoriously we, we take his money away from him and give it to other departments. I want that money, if we do approve this, I want that money tacked into the BFU um, agreement, if you're, you understand what I'm saying. I want it earmarked for that. Right. But right now, their agreement's paid for water and sewer money. Okay, well. But this will be new, and I definitely will be required to, to put it in a line to pay our contract amount. I can't leave it up in a personal services right. line. Okay, and then the other thing that I kind of want to talk about is um, once you get the contract that you're wanting to go, wanting us to sign, I would like to take time, and I don't know how the rest of council feels, but to have our attorney go over this with us, and if she has concerns and stuff, and I don't know, do we do that in executive session, or would it be at a regular council meeting? Or work session. Yeah. Okay. I think it could be an, an executive. Okay, so what what's the time limit you guys are planning here? I'm sorry? What's the time limit are you? For what? When does this need to get paid? For your salary, it would have to be by January 1, correct? Well, I can wait. I'm not I'm not going to hurry. I mean, if, if I miss a couple paychecks, c'est la vie. Well, you, you made the comment that the, the contract that we all read, every page, word for word, 50 pages. Interesting, wasn't it? Um, <laughs> is that, that's not the final. Is that what I, you said, Jeff? That was not, that's not a contract. That was okay. just the right. history of, <clears throat> yeah. to try to show what, you know. So I'm my question is on. then, when will you have the contract ready for us to look at? Well, we sent it to Darla first when we sent it out to you so she could you know, look it over, and sure. so she's wanted to answer when a contract could be, because I'll not be putting it together for obvious reasons, and Jeff's sent his proposal, so what what contract is developed will be based on what the board wants to do. And, and that's why I say maybe a work session then to discuss it with Darla and um, the rest of the council. It's gonna be a minimal change, it's gonna be going to add in the town manager's salary to it so that'll have to be there amended in there somewhere and then the length and the terms and the are, CPI and which is which is part of the original contract it's just changing those and I'll highlight them and then we'll just change it from Biden Faneuil Utilities to BFU Inc which is the name we're doing business as Biden Faneuil Utilities so that's the only changes you'll see that you've had since 1995 so, but I mean, I, we'll get that to Darla tomorrow so she can share her thoughts. And the rest of it's negotiable, whatever the board, sure. board's pleasure. What's the current severability of the contract? Like if a future town council says we don't want to do it. The current contract has a four cause. In, in other words, if you guys would not right, you didn't be, you know, the next board didn't want to put money into the sewer plant and it was failing and we didn't want our name on it. Right. And then it's same for you if we're doing things that are not what you've asked us to do. And um, so it, it has the ability to get out of the contract. And it's rather Cost. short term. Yeah. 60 days. 60 I days, I believe. What some people don't, they want it to be 90 days because they want longer you know, you'd want longer time to make sure that right. you could find an operator, but <laughs> those are all the things. We've never, obviously, we've been sitting here for 27 years, right. so I'm not, those things, don't, you can put 30 days on if you want, so. Was, um, was the operator at any time part of the town position, or was it always Biden family? They were when I first came here, and when... Um, I, obviously, they were when I first came here. That's why you were facing $25,000 a day fines. No, I'm not talking about that one, but after you guys took over, wasn't it still in 
uh, Ellettsville employee that was the operator? They, I was I was the operator from the day I was hired, and we had a, another person working at the wastewater plant. And then when we in 1997, when we built the new plant, um, we hired two people, and they for a short term, they were still Ellettsville employees. And then that's when we hired Mike and. Uh, and the contract got bigger, and so they just became our employees at that 2000 time. 2000 is when their employees yeah. became, our employees became their employees. I think that's correct. So help me out here, guys, because I see it. We're kind of talking about two different but related things. One is the extension of the contract back to the 10-year mark. The other of which is the inclusion of the town manager's salary in the overall contract. Right. Actually, to be correct, one of them is including salary in the contract, and the other is um, considering changing the CPI um, limit from 3% to 5%, right. and extending the contract five more years, extending it out. Okay, so, but so there's two different things. Would you have an issue if we treat these as different topics because for the speed of it? That's we're, totally it. Where we do an addendum yeah. to add the town manager now as we work through the contract so we're not sitting here three, four, five weeks and it makes it cleaner at the first of the year as to how he starts getting paid if we just do the amendment to put him there now? That's logical. Now, my next question what are we paying him for a year? Or what would we be paying him for a year if he actually took a salary? Was it 48? Well, it was going to be 48, and then when we was talking about everything and we was pretty tight and we was taking two here and three there from all kinds of people's line uh, line and so I finally budged three thousand two so um, um, it was it, and and the I came up with the the, the salary based on sixty percent of the department head salary uh, theoretically um, uh, the the old town manager w was only supposed to work three days a week. Yeah, it didn't work but, out that way. Huh? It didn't work out that way. No, no, no. it did not. And uh, so, um, but anyway, that's, we ended up at 45000 So Okay. So what I would suggest to the council, and, and hear me out before everybody says no, let's go ahead and kind of separate these out if they're agreeable to it. Go ahead and put forty-five in there if, it, if Mike's comfortable with that or whatever you guys are comfortable with. For this year but let's put it on an evergreen clause so it's not really a five six seven year if this is agreeable to you yeah yeah where it just continues Perfect. rolling over every year but let's also think ahead a little bit at forty five thousand dollars we're getting an incredible bargain to have a town manager there we know at some point this town manager sorry mike is going to leave us so let's get ourselves used to actually paying for that town manager so it's not sticker shock later so we add in an evergreen clause every year at plus five percent every year it rolls over or however 7% or whatever you want to do because that way we eventually get that salary to when he does leave hopefully 20, 30 years from now, we're paying him what we would be paying the next person as they come in as opposed to having to make a $40,000 adjustment or whatever. And, and to Dan's point earlier, um, I have been trying to keep that salary in there and actually propose um, to, to bolster how much it was because at some point when I'm not here, um, we definitely will want to have a hefty salary in there so we can attract some talent. So is five enough percentage a year, do you think, to get us where we need to go? Because you, only you know how long you're planning on staying. Sure, I mean, I mean yeah, that's fine, thank you. Yeah, that's No, I mean, it, it, no, not, not just to you, but do you think that gets us to where we need to go by the time you leave in Well, I, I think it, uh, the, Yes, and but the easy answer is, um, when I go, I think you guys will want to consider making it a full-time job, right? Um, just from experience, and um, I think by then the growth, hopefully the growth and the activity will um, deem that a good idea. Are you comfortable with the evergreen rollover? So we don't yeah, have to evergreen's worry about perfect. I, I never even thought about using that way. That. We're just rolling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's Christmas. So. Yeah. <laughs> what do you guys think? I, I, I get what you're saying, Scott. I really do on, on that. And I agree we have to get that salary built up to where we can replace him. 
but I'd rather that to be, instead of con contractually obligated to be part of the uh, discussions like we do for the other employees. Well, see, it's the problem that when we're doing it this way, he's not another employee, he's con a contract. So you could set it up whatever we give the other employees or 5%, either way. So if you give them seven one year, I mean, this year, thank God, right. they're all getting much more than that. Well, he would be left behind. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to bump up that salary a little bit at a time and, and please God, never make it to where we're once again having to tell them, sorry, there's nothing to make, right. you can't have a raise. So if we make it 5%, and I'm just guessing at that, that way that contract, we know what the fixed cost is going in for the next year before we ever talk to anybody else about the raises. Well, but how would that work <clears throat> if it is commingled with the contract? Just like any other line item. If, if, if Again, you go to McDonald's, you want a Big Mac, you're paying $7. You want a Big Mac and fries, you're paying $9. You want a Big Mac, fries, and a Coke, you're paying $32. I mean, but, it's but just whatever you select off the menu. But the CPI would be included in their contract. No, not in regard to the town manager. So the town manager would be a separate line? Within the contract, yes. Because it'll have an evergreen clause with it, as opposed to the total CBU contract. Or, I'm not CBU, sorry, my Nathaniel contract. And what was the sorry. reason, again, you don't want to be paid through? Pardon? I'm well, sorry. I, I just, it'll make it easier for me to get paid from one entity and my retirement, um, some considerations for, I'm not, I'm not, if, if I was a town employee, I don't know if I'd be perf or not, but I just didn't want to go that route. So it's not a real big deal, but, but it, it just made my life a little easier and it didn't, money's money. And so um, I just asked for that. And by the way, I would be a happy meal, so. You'd be what? A happy meal. Oh. <laughs> well, it could be a big what? difference if you're a perf employee and you have to stop drawing your retirement. So are you saying you'd have a cheap toy inside or? Well, I'll just make you smile. Well, we're gonna leave that one behind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying, Mike? It could be a big difference if you become a perf employee because then I don't know you could draw your perf, could you? Well, he's already drawn. After so long time, you can start over. Yeah, well, I didn't know, but I, I, but but at the end of the day, this just makes it's it's something I asked for. I, it just it feels like the right way to do it for me. It's clear because it's going to the right side. And I could be right. wrong on the perfect. Yeah, and I well, I, I this would take care of that. Well, I think it's a lot of good things to think about. Hopefully we can get it going, and <clears throat> because personally, I think you should have been drawing a salary all along. I mean, you're doing the job you needed to pay for it, and that didn't really set right with me in the beginning when you were doing it for free. So, seemed odd, didn't it? Yeah, it just oh, didn't seem right. Oh, so, <laughs> but 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 I, I want to remind what Sandy says I, by doing it this way. It's a way of saving money, and there's nothing wrong with that. Jeff, could you bring his contract language by next meeting so we can, particularly for severing these from the overall contract? Yeah, I think I, uh, I'll, I can write it like I think you wish, and then if you need, if it needs to change, and we'll try to, we'll get it circulated to Darla first, and then she can yeah. red mark it and mm -hmm. send it back to me, and then we'll circulate it to you before the next meeting, well ahead of time. That way, if somebody would like to see a different or a comparable contract that's read a different way, we could have two and then you could make up your mind. Well, I would love to see a work session. Well, that sounds good. So, yeah. so, but right that's now. not gonna happen before the first of the year with Christmas and everything else. Mm -hmm. The that's only way we would be, well, because not everybody's gonna be here next meeting. I was yeah. gonna say normally we would do it before the next meeting, but then we've got Christmas week. So I, I really don't know logistic wise how we would do that if and you guys said that, I mean you're still under a five-year contract so the only hurry would be <laughs> your salary for the the town manager right. starting January 1st which I'm fine with the back that, pay that's what I mean whatever that's if, what if we don't get it yeah that's what we talked about you know, too. I mean if you have to wait and make your decision 
this first payroll or the first council meeting in January, you can say it's retroactive we don't, January one. We don't we don't bill you for January until February. February, 1st. okay. So we have time. So um, because we're if if they're okay with it and everybody to be cleaner, it's two different discussions. As Scott and I have said, that one is attaching the salary. Number two would be extending the contract. Yeah, I think that's a longer discussion right. than attaching the salary, at least in my world. You know, attaching the salary seems like a no-brainer to me. That's why I wanted to break it out separate, have him pull up an addendum to the current contract, and then we vote on the entire new contract when it comes back as a clean sheet, if that makes sense. Is that doable for you guys? And, and we still have January, so we have time. You got two meetings. You got one more meeting this month and two next month before we would ever. So we build, always bill on arrears, so... Um, do we need a work session just for the the salary thing? Is that what you're saying? The addendum? No. I mean, I can see for the contract, but... Well, I just think maybe just have it together, and that way if we still have questions, we can ask the questions then. So we have time, guys. I mean, what's the hurry, you know? Certainly this work session could be prior to, prior to a meeting. Right. right. Should After the holidays. Paper. Get it and go from there. I mean, since a lot of the council won't be here next meeting, it's. We well, gotta make sure we have a quorum. That's true. Yeah, I know. Me and Trevor won't be there. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Any other council discussion? <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. There's a lot of business to take care of the last meeting of the month, so of the year. So I'm telling you, please, if you don't think we're going to have a quorum. Let's change the meeting date and rearrange because I will need you to sign off on encumbrances for next year. It's major. Do we need one the rest of the month? Mm -hmm. We yeah, have to have at least one meeting more this this year. And the next one's scheduled for December 27th. So if for some reason we do not have a quorum, I need 48 hours to repost. I will be here. I should be here. I will not. Pam, are you here? I should be. Because that's a Tuesday night this time around rather than Monday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, is there any public comment on this discussion at all? <clears throat> okay. All right, so the direction, I think the consensus is, well, should we put this on the first meeting in January then? Let me see. I think that... Nine. Ninth. Okay. Put on the agenda for the ninth. Yeah. But make sure we get the information a lot sooner, and then via email, just let's get a consensus whether we need to schedule a work session beforehand. That sound reasonable to everybody? Mm -hmm. Sounds good to me. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any other comments on it from council? All right, next thing on the agenda is a memorandum of understanding between the town of Ellettsville, the Ellettsville Department of Public Parks and Recreation, and the Ellettsville Youth Sports League. Is this you, Jimmy, or is this Darla? This is me. All right. I put together this memorandum of understanding based on conversations <coughs> that um, the town council members had with members of the um, Ellettsville um, and I'm not going to get the name right necessarily, the new Youth Sports League, Youth Sports League, um, and uh, I've incorporated the comments into this memorandum of understanding. The attorney for Ellettsville Youth Sports, Inc., Dan Sear, was out of town for part of next week, and he did receive it, and he noted that he would review it with his clients and get back to me. Um, so it might be appropriate to table it, but if the town council members have any comments or suggestions, I would appreciate it if you would tell me so that we could make changes or make Mr. Sear aware that um, the draft that I sent him might need some toggling, so. Any council discussion on this? Well, I appreciate you. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was just saying I think we should table it. And yeah, I agree. I, I appreciate all the work you put into it, Darla. Looks like you covered everything we, we discussed at the meetings. Um, have they seen the copy of this? I sent it to Mr. Sear and to the president of okay. Ellisville U Sports, Inc., Martha Heidenreich. Heidenreich. Did Martha get back with you? 
She did not. Okay. And she did send in a suggested um, job description for a new part-time, so it's a start, and I gave you each a copy of that. Okay. I just received this today, and she also told me that they were going to give me a check for $2,000 so that I can go ahead and get the checking account opened up and that they will be transferring both their electrical and the water and sewer bill into the town's name and that $2,000 will cover those costs until they start recruiting for baseball. And we're working on a meeting with, is it Martha? Yes, Martha, yes, Martha and uh, Jimmy and uh, Marty Stevens. Uh, we're supposed to get with him because we lease the ball fields from them. So we're trying to get a date where we can get talk to him. Any public comment on this? <clears throat> Any more council discussion? No? Seeing none, moving on to the next item of business. Bloomington Economic Development Corporation has four seats for the town of Ellisville, one for the town council, one for the town manager, and two general member seats. Do you want to talk about this? Yeah, I'll start it and then I'm going to refer to Darla. Um, so um, I became uh, the ex officio member of the Bloomington Economic Development Corporation uh, when we joined a few uh, years ago. I, I don't know if it's two or three years. I lose track of time. And uh, so um, I did not understand that we actually had four seats available, uh, one on the uh, Executive Council, and then one, and then three just regular members. Um, help me out if I say the wrong thing, Jen. Uh, so um, I, I just did not know that, and so it came to light. And so um, there's some interest in the seats, and um, one of the seats I definitely want, would like to have Denise assigned to. And I, my question is, do I assign those, or should the board assign those? And, and how, how do we work through this? Because um, we'll eventually send an email to Jen, and, and, and so I need, I need to know how to proceed. Go ahead. the town of Ellettsville so involved in the Bloomington Economic Development Corporation. We serve all of Monroe County in fostering economic development. Um, in terms of the two seats, so um, is this is the same for Monroe County, for the city of Bloomington, and for Ellettsville. So typically the executive for that local government sits on our executive committee. And then we also have one member from each of the councils that sits on the executive committee and participates in monthly meetings. And then the two additional liaisons um, are invited to our monthly board meetings. Uh, so we have 11 of those throughout the year. Um, and it's really important to us to make sure that Ellettsville is really well represented in uh, community-wide conversations and that we're fully supporting you. So when we recently were doing an audit on just making sure that you had your full membership benefits, we realized that we wanted to include um, all four liaisons. And typically, our organizations that are members uh, include leaders or rising leaders within the organization. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks. And so, and, and so um, I was worried about setting a precedent just on our behalf and then come to find out that somebody from the board should be on the executive board as well. And so that spot's open. So Pam had uh, shown interest and, and asked me to look into it. And so I just need to know how we proceed to make this all happen. Um, uh, William, um, and I thought we set in precedent when, when he did it, um, he had asked to be on it, and they said yes, so I, I, I misunderstood. So William's currently on it, and I've talked to William and Pam, and so I need to know who says what to whom to get this make, make this happen. Okay, I guess that's a good question. What does the, Jen, what do the charter or the organizational docs for the BEDC say about how these four individuals are to be selected? Is it just left to Ellettsville? Yeah, so typically the way we operate is um, the lead, uh, like, liaison from the member uh, kind of makes those decisions. So th that's why the question went to Michael Farmer. Um, I know for Monroe County Council and the city council, for the council seat, liaison um, they typically decide amongst themselves who they're going to appoint 
And then it would really be up to you working with the organization for the two other seats, um, who you think would be a best fit um, for the type of work that we do together. So it sounds like the council would have a pick and then the council could decide whether Mike Farmer picks the two general member seats or whether the council wants to do that. Do we need to do an ordinance for that though? I don't believe so, no. Well, we, we do all our appointments the first of the year, first meeting. I don't know if this needs to wait till then or. That would be fine with me. I wanted to bring it up so we could get it clear. Everybody know what's going on and maybe that is the appropriate time to do it. That, that would be fine. I just get it. What's everybody else think on that? Can, yeah, just wait. Do you have any meetings scheduled between now and? I think the first one is the first Thursday of January. I believe that's the fifth. Okay, so that would we'd miss one. Okay, but this the way we'd be on the same cycle. And if you'd like some a proxy to sit in on the fifth um, for from council, you're most welcome. Okay. Who's on the I am, but I've not been able to really attend because of the timing of it. When you guys started this, wasn't it the town council president? that was on it and mm -hmm. and then I couldn't keep making the meetings by where the time and date so Mike started going in my place and then I think I took over during COVID because I was at a few of the meetings so I think it stuck to the town council president at the time so um, you know I I feel it should be the council appointment just at January or at the first meeting with all the rest of them's fine and then keep Mike on it too. Is that what everyone's thinking? Mm -hmm. And the two general member seats, are those appointed by Mike or how that would? Um, I mean, to, it, how you all want <coughs> to make that decision is fully up to you, but we would typically look for the lead liaison to just let us know who those people are. Okay. And I'm fine either way. I mean, if you decide, then I don't have to. It makes it cleaner because all the other boards of commissions are filled from this seat as opposed right. to. Right, I mean, so we do the appointments for, yep, I, I agree. I think it takes the weight off his shoulders. Yep. And there's no party involved in it, is there? No, there's no, no the partisan breakdown. No. If it helps for those other seats, for example, in the city of Bloomington, there's uh, individuals who work closely with economic development issues, and so they fill a couple of those seats. Okay. And that's why I thought the meeting would be perfect for one of the seats. I'm sorry, I missed it. No, I just said that's why I suggested Denise would be oh, okay. perfect for one of those seats. Oh, yeah. And then I might suggest if you guys are open to it, um, if Pam's interested in it, William, you just make her your proxy and she could go to the first meeting and then we can appoint yeah. someone after I'm good that. with that. That way she doesn't, you need a written proxy or is this good enough? Yeah, that's right. Pam, you're my proxy. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any uh, public discussion on this? Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. I, I, I have, excuse me. Yes. And thank you. Um, I have one more agenda item. You and public discussion on the last. Okay. So the appointment to the general members, is it of the community? Is it the town of Ellettsville? Is it address related? Is it? I mean, are there? Uh, I assume it would be in the, the town limits of Ellettsville. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, right. Yeah, if you could. Um, so typically with our, all of our, three of our local governments is someone who works um, for the local governments that participate uh, as one of those liaisons. I think she was talking about the general member seats though. Uh, yes, yes, that's amongst the four that okay. we're talking about. Go ahead, Mike. Okay, so I, I apologize. Oh, I, but actually, any other public comment? Okay. I apologize, um, I did not manage to get uh, Lynn Stafford, who we'd already planned to be here from Drive Clean Indiana, y'all got a card from him. I've been working with him and talking to him, and 
Uh, I think part of my job is to bring innovation and new ideas to the town, whether we uh, think they're good for the town, that's one thing. But after talking to Lynn several times, um, uh, I invited him to come and he has a short presentation of why he would like for him, for us to um, uh, <coughs> consider what he's talking about. And so, Lynn? And I apologize, it was not on the agenda. My fault. Good evening. Uh, thank you, Mr. Farmer, Chief Durnell. Uh, I'm Lynn Stafford, I'm with Drive Clean Indiana. Uh, Drive Clean Indiana is the clean cities organization here in the state. I think probably the best way to describe uh, what we do is to try to language how, how it was formed and, and our purpose, and that is to uh, essentially support uh, national energy and security uh, initiatives and develop relationships for the advancement of domestic affordable fuels and uh, to implement sustainable transportation uh, solutions. That's what we do every day. Uh, we work on and off-road in, in doing these endeavors. We um, work with businesses, with uh, municipalities. We're up in Lake Michigan with tankers, who folks that are looking for lower costs and we're getting them out of diesel into uh, better fuels. Uh, the technology that's coming down the line not only includes electric uh, vehicles, but also hydrogen. There's, there's lots of stuff on the drawing board right now. In regard to um, EV and everyone's perception of, of electric cars or hybrids, what I can report is that, um, to my knowledge, there's no real R&D right now significant that is being spent on developing engines. All the money's going into EV. So this is not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And I'm here tonight uh, to uh, have the opportunity to share with you that there's just multiple funding opportunities, a lot, for introducing EV charging stations. I wrote some of these down. There's, uh, as well as uh, new vehicles, fleet replacement programs. Th as a result, there'll be additional tax credits. And what we'd like to do is have a chance to work with you and develop a plan and be a partner with you along the way uh, to your success, uh, starting with uh, having a vision, a strategy for where you are now to where you want to go, and work with you to make sure that you accomplish that. Uh, the, the monies that's coming in on a federal level, and that's what uh, the Clean Cities groups do, we act as a conduit between state and federal to bring the funding in as well as we do project management, there's a whole host of things that as conversation uh, continues that we could be in service to you in different ways. Um, we also do first responder training and that would include uh, regular fuels. Uh, we do grant writing, uh, and I mentioned first responder training. There's just a whole list of things. Currently, we're working with um, utility companies across the state in an effort to uh, satisfy the NEVI program, the uh, National EV Infrastructure for uh, charging stations that will, are, are purportedly to be every 50 miles, uh, 74, 69, et cetera, all around, uh, all around the state. And uh, so the utility companies have never really worked together, so that's sort of interesting and they're learning how to play nice. Um, these are all design and build for next year. So there's a lot going on in this area. What I'd like to propose to you is that uh, you consider coming on board. We start with a fleet survey. It's a fleet census of what's going on in your, in your, uh, in your city, in your town. And from that census, we're able to tell. Uh, it's like a quick snapshot for you to understand where your emissions are where there might be cost savings, and it will inform you on future buying decisions as well. We are a member-based organization, and uh, 
I'll just pass along if anyone has any questions. I, I, it's, I'm, I'm sorry I don't have more of a formal uh, presentation, but I just wanted to share that much with you in that you might uh, give some additional conversation and discussion along the way here. And so, you know, my interest is uh, when I talked to Lynn, um, we talked about uh, uh, propane and yeah, and, and so we got some f feedback from the board that was not positive, but I think EVs are in everybody's future and Lynn mentioned that we could get grants that would pay for us to put charging stations in, is that correct? Yes. Yes, and so I thought it might be worth, it might be a good start if, you know, if even if we don't start buying EV vehicles immediately, um, I think maybe if a grant would pay for a couple of charging stations in town, it's something that would be good for the community and uh, it's just another draw when people are passing by, you know, if they pull into our community to charge up, um, I don't know. I, I, it's just, it's a consideration. So I, I, I at least wanted to expose you to it. And so if it drives further conversation, great. And um, I think the best thing to do, if anybody's interested on the board, is to talk to Lynn directly. If you, if you talk long enough, you, you hear things that might be interesting as far as what it could do for our community. Certainly with your fleet, uh, if that's where it starts, uh, there's been perhaps some interest in, in looking at a number of charging stations around your own fleet, uh, perhaps law enforcement. And then from an economic development standpoint, there's uh, downtown. And it's, it's a nice thing to uh, be on the progressive side and demonstrate to the citizens that, in fact, you uh, have an eye on the future. Any council comments or discussion? Huh? Do you have any kind of cost analysis to someone who's converted to the electric police cars to like <coughs> how much the total investment and then the cost savings on fuel might be? We will, We yes, we do. And we do that after we do the fleet assessment, but I'm sure that I could get someone in the back room to speak with you in regard to we work with municipalities all across the state. Uh, for instance, say Muncie, Indiana, which is a, a, a larger town, but um, they're CNG. And the thing about CNG, that usually starts with refuse, and it's a big expense to put in CNG, millions of dollars with pipe pressure. But once that CNG station is built, and they're using it for refuse. Uh, what, what everyone realizes is that the more horses go into the trough, the faster the return on investment. And at that point, that's when uh, the rest of the fleet would consider converting to a by fuel uh, CNG vehicle that includes law enforcement. Uh, the upside to that would be, in the case of uh, Muncie, is that they, uh, there's no range anxiety uh, it's a program that's been going successfully for the last seven or eight years, and they're very happy with it. And they, too, are looking at, uh, they're dipping their toe into uh, hybrids as well on the police force in regard to, uh, to electrics. But what will happen in the meanwhile, you can save a lot of money. So uh, just to be no, clear, um, I, I don't have rose-colored glasses on when we talk about this. You can't hardly get an EV car right now. And... Um, you know, to think that our fleet would ever be all EV, uh, I, won't, I know I won't be here. But I, I just thought that we should be exposed to the technology and, and the idea that there might be avenues to get charging stations. Whether we do anything about it, uh, really it, that lead should come from the board. But thank, I, I thank Lynn for coming and letting us know about it. I appreciate the opportunity. Any, any other you. questions? All good? Uh, all right. We're all good. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Mike, did you want to talk about something else with an article? Yeah, I was going to do it. Supervisor's comment. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So we'll go next. Privilege of the floor. Any public comments on anything? Not covered? Not covered. Hmm? Mm -hmm. 
Uh, Ron building. Van Evener, uh, building inspector of town Ellettsville and also resident of uh, Ellettsville at 323 West Blackfoot Drive. I want to thank my farmer, uh, all the supervisors here, the town council for your support with this raise. It's going to help each and every one of us. It's going to keep a lot of us here. Second of all, I wanted to uh, mention about the uh, youth sports. Um, they're having a meeting at the library tonight. That's probably why none of the board members were here. Um, my grandson played this year, and uh, it was tremendous on what happened at basketball. We just wrapped that season up. Uh, we actually got to take all the kids to one of the basketball games, the high school basketball games, and I've never seen so many smiling faces. So it was great. Even Jeff saw that. So, um, and I want to thank each and every one of the town employees. As a resident of Ellettsville, I, I truly mean it that each and every one of you guys are family and special to us. And that goes from public safety, street department, utilities, to the office people. And I appreciate that. Thank you all very much. Thank you. I'm not really sure how to follow, follow that, but um, I just wanted to say um, on behalf of the BEDC, one, thank you for your engagement, but also thank you for your engagement in the Economic Vitality Project. I wanted to give a quick update on that. Um, that's our Monroe County-wide initiative to convene people to address some of the biggest economic development challenges we're facing, including <coughs> jobs, creation, workforce, land use and infrastructure, quality of life, um, as well as other areas. Um, thank you to Michael for being a part of our steering committee for that. A quick update for you is we're honing in on a final plan and we'll be talking to partners um, that will be agreeing to be a part of that plan in January and hoping to unveil that plan in February for implementation starting afterwards. It dovetails really, really nicely with the Envision Ellettsville plan. I know Clark Greiner from our team has been leading on that um, from, from our side of the house uh, in engaging with Envision Ellettsville. And the goal of the Economic Vitality Project is to support existing initiatives like Envision Ellettsville, and we want to make sure that you're well <coughs> represented across the community. Um, so just wanted to thank you for your engagement and support. Thank you. <coughs> Sorry, I had one other Real quick, I want to be good. I wanted to ask the council, as the building inspector, last year I gave you an end of the year report. Do you guys want that again, or, you know, or do I burn paper and ink? I don't want that. Okay. Electronically is fine, though. Electronically. Electronically. All right. Better. Thank you very much. Sandy, you all right? Chris Klaus, Deputy Fire Chief. Um, December 10th, we, we held our uh, annual awards ceremony for the fire department. Uh, and I want to recognize a few people that are here tonight. Um, Kip Petty has had 20 years in with the fire department. Uh, we've reached some milestones. Uh, Ronnie Van Deven has had 20 years with the fire department. And Kenny Parrish has had 25 years with the fire department. So if we could give them a round of applause. <laughs> Thank you. Can we get, get you up for a picture? Yeah. We'd like to put that on the chamber for the Yeah, after the meeting would be good for that. All right. <laughs> Any more public comment? All right, seeing none, supervisor comments, Mike. Sure, I'm gonna talk about um, something, it's just it's to me too hard, I'm gonna to have to talk about it. So uh, a lot of people read in the paper, the dangerous mile about Highway 46, and um, I'm complaining um, to the HT right now, it seemed to be a hurried, sensationalized story. Um, I found out that almost all the quotes, or what seemed to be quotes, came from a CATS meeting, and they never talked to me. And so um, I, I know everybody's concerned about the highway and everybody uses the highway and a lot of people goes fast on the highway. So um, I, I just wanted everybody to know that indeed um, 
we have talked to NDOT. They didn't say we couldn't or couldn't have anything. We could or couldn't have anything. They uh, came to uh, the, ta uh, the town. They had four people there. They were all very intelligent. They seemed to be well educated about how our town's um, roadway went through and they knew all about it. They talked to me and Denise for probably two or three hours and um, they are going back and they are studying um, some of our issues, whether it be speed, traffic lights, uh, right turns off of Arlington Road, and there was something else I can't remember, but it was not that, it was just a, uh, a small thing. But anyway, they are, um, they are um, looking into how um, we use Highway 46 and, and they're gonna look at the crashes and this, that, and the other. So um, it, it seemed to be a sensationalized story. And the truth is in the last 12 months, we've had 24 accidents and uh, quite a few of those are just fender benders. Hardly any of them are at intersections and none of them at a, are at Starbucks. So, so to single out some, some of our, uh, our businesses and, and how dangerous it is to come out of them, if you're not paying attention and you're going too fast, obviously it's dangerous to be driving on the highway. And other than that, we're looking into uh, how the highway affects us and how we affect the highway, and we're let, leaving it to the um, professionals, and that would be the NDOT people who control the road anyway. So I just wanted to make that clear. And, I, and, and, and if everybody goes, well, you might be too harsh on the HT, well, I'm pretty sure it was a hurried, hurried article, and I'll probably get in trouble with them for this, but one of the accompanying pictures has the mayor of Bloomington looking at lead lines on the east side of town, and they use that to, for illustration on part of the dangerous smile. So uh, anyway, not too happy about it. I don't like sensationalized social media, media or papers or any kind of media, so I wanted to put it to rest that we're looking into it, and we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. Again. So a couple years ago, we had a, a study done, traffic count, and if I recall correctly, the average roadway usage, so both ways, east-west, of the 46 as it went through Ellsville was about 50,000 cars a day, 25,000 in, 25,000 out, and of course, some of them's running around town, and that's the average. That, folks, is 18,250,000 vehicles a year running up and down 46. We had 24 accidents. And if Jimmy looked at them, I looked at some other stats, and correct me if I'm wrong, the vast majority you looked at were at intersections, correct? The vast majority I looked at further east were at intersections. And again, I get the, the presumption, and I don't mean that in a negative way, that speed is the issue. The issue is not speed, the issue is people not stopping for the red light. 24 accidents out of 18 million trips. I'll even have that. So 9 million trips for 25,000 people on average a day, and you had 24 accidents, most of them at intersections. The issue is not speed. The issue is people not stopping for the red light, not people not paying attention and slamming into people who are stopped at the red light. So let's not have a knee-jerk reaction to something and, and inadvertently start moving that bubble away where it should be. So let's concentrate on education about stopping for the red lights as required by law. Let's talk about the use of the center turn lane on 46, which is a turn lane, not a travel lane. You don't get out of it and you get to go a quarter mile. You get out of it and you stop and then you can enter traffic. That's the way the law has designed it. Again, folks, you're right. There are definitely people who speed down 46. But to put that as our primary focus, I will tell you, at least in my opinion, is a danger because then we're missing the true le lesson learned here, which is people failing to stop at the red lights. And when you look at the sheer numbers of it, I am sorry for anybody who got hurt and absolutely anybody who lost their life. But when you're talking about 24 accidents, even if we have it at 9 million trips, if somebody wants to do the math on that, it begins at point zero something or other. So the issue is not overtly massive speed. The issue is people not paying attention to what the state law already has there. So please take that to heart when we start talking about sensational journalism because Mike's correct in that fact. But let's take the lessons learned that are learned in data, not the lessons learned where we think we see something. Because the data shows us that it's fair to stop at the intersections or fair to stop when other people are stopped. It's not paying attention going down 46, not anything else beyond that. That's all I got to say. All right. 
I had one other thing to say. Yeah. Um, so um, for the um, employees and the raise, uh, well-deserved, and um, the board approved it. it it's, it's for them you should thank, not me. And anything I had to do with it had to do with uh, the collective department heads. Uh, we were one with this, uh, like the last year's budget and this year's budget. All things were considered. And uh, we understand the seriousness and of getting a raise, let alone a $10,000 raise. And so uh, we, as employees, all of us intend to earn that and keep earning it. And so, but it's, it's not me. It's the collective department heads that put this all together. So. Okay. Jamie? We had 25 plus people there tonight, what they call their call out meeting for the spring and fall, our spring and summer uh, uh, sports. So they're excited, uh, they're ready to go. I talked to Jason Barrett and uh, Mr. Kendricks, I think they have got the name, and they're excited about it. They're, they're excited to talk to Sandy, they've got things worked out with her. Uh, the job description, as far as I'm concerned, needs just a little bit of update. I'll give my input to that when they do that. But uh, thank you so much for supporting that. I think it's going to be great for Ellisville. I know it's going to be great for the kids. So thank you very much. Thank you. Jeff? Yeah, I've been coming to these meetings for 27 years, and I've never seen this many employees at, at, at a meeting. And I, I was thinking to myself, I mean, there's firemen, policemen, and obviously utility and street and a lot of the office staff. And uh, I'm just proud to be their coworkers. There's, we are blessed with... Uh, a lot of good people that work for the town of Eltsville. It's good for you to see them as well, I'm sure. Uh, we go about our business every day, uh, and for them to get this raise, I think, is a Merry Christmas to, to all of us. So I'm proud to be your coworkers. You should give yourselves a hand. <laughs> oh, yep. I got a little business. Um, at the Eltsville Wastewater Plant, we have a flooding problem, which floods out our motor control center uh, during rain events. Uh, we've got a, tr a dry creek bed that goes right over one of our junction boxes that we need to move. And it's gonna take quite the, the effort to reroute the water around the wastewater plant. Um, so we took, uh, got a couple prices, what we could come up with. Uh, one is from Tom Hetty. And the other one's from Tom, help me with his last name. TNM. TNM, yeah. TNM was $6,800 to, we need to remove about 25 trees and they're gonna put them on the ground safely for us. Um, and Mr. Hetty's bid was 4,000 and I would like to take the low bid and get that job done. I'm not sure. How many trees? Uh, probably. I'm uh, guessing 25. Or 25 and 4,000. A 4, lot. 4,800. I don't even know if I need a, I don't know if we need. Let, let me help. Yeah. This has to be done. And it needs to be done soon <laughs> anyway. I need a, we need a vote. Is there a, a line in your budget or anything that we can take that out of? Or where does it need to come from? It'll come from wastewater and yes. it's an enterprise and, and they do a budget as a courtesy for the council, but we have the money. Yeah, they're not, for, okay. it's nothing like the general fund. All right. So do we have council discussion on this? Council action? I make a motion we approve Hetty, is it Hetty and son? to uh, revert the water so that the junction box doesn't flood. No. no. So you cut the trees. Drop the trees. Okay. What he said. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a motion to approve the bid for $4,000 to remove trees at the utility plant. And to come out of the wastewater budget, correct? Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At least wait till January before you start. All right. We have a motion made. Second. Okay, William Ellis. 
Yes. Trevor Sager? Yes. Scott Oldham? Yes. Dan Swafford? Yes. Pamela Samples? Yes. Motion carried. Kevin. I'd like to thank the council for the salary ordinance and budget approval. Uh, it was much needed. It puts the firefighters uh, a lot closer to where the competition is, and I'm very optimistic that this will at least slow the revolving door around, uh, slow it down. So uh, thank you very much, and I know the firefighters thank you. Okay. I'll just kind of echo everybody before me. Uh, thank you very much for approving the salary ordinance. Um, uh, also, we wrapped up our leaf pickup for the season. Uh, everything went pretty well normal, as normal could be. And uh, since probably won't be seeing you till after Christmas, Merry Christmas to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Denise? Um, I also want to thank the town council for approving the budget and the salary ordinance. Thank you very much. And I also wanted to let you know that we were awarded a community impact grant from the Community Foundation of Bloomington in Monroe County to move the log cabin um, up to Town Hall to sit alongside the Heritage Trail that will be constructed. The grants for $44,152. Total project cost is estimated at $88,304. And what that will do for us is move the log cabin from its location up to Town Hall, um, site preparation and preservation of the cabin so it will sit there for many years to come. And the money will, at the, the, our side of the money will come from the ARPA fund? Yes. When are they okay. going to do that? I'm sorry? When are they going to do that? When I met with them today um, over Zoom and they're going to give us till June 30th of 2024 to get it done. I estimated we would probably relocate the cabin in the fall. Uh, <clears throat> we have some site work we'll have to do so the truck can get into the site. And but about the same time, I mean, the summer we're going to start the trail work. So I wanted to give Public Works a little time to get the trail work going and then switch over to um, pre prepare the site for the cabin. Yeah, I'm sorry, fall 23. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mr. President, one more thing. I wanna thank Denise. That's been a long drawn out thing. I've been involved with the Senior Citizen Board forever and that cabin has bounced back and forth from, from different people and Denise has jumped right on it. I'm tickled to death it's gonna be preserved and moved up here because Morris Enright worked his butt off back in the 60s to get that thing up here. So, and again, I'd like to thank the council for approval of the uh, uh, pay increase. It's really appreciated. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Sandy? Well, I better say thank you or I'll just be odd duck out. <laughs> so, thank you very much. It's been nerve wracking a few times, but you guys came through for us, and I know that everybody here really appreciates it. So, thank you. Okay. And you did it just in time for me to retire. So now you know, <laughs> I may have to stick around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All, right. <laughs> All right. Any council comments? Okay. Seeing none, meeting is adjourned.